powerful punch blamed for damage across Central Florida and the death of a man in Marion County. We have team coverage on what's left behind and what lies ahead for the busy holiday weekend. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lisa Bell. And I'm Julie Broughton. Ginger Gadsden is off tonight. We start with the radar still lighting up with lots of storms out there. Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells is pinpointing the latest. It's been a tough run in the last 24 hours for a large part of the state of Florida. And right now we're saying goodbye to this system. Maximum sustained wind 50 miles per hour. It's way up there in the Carolinas now, but lingering behind it is all the rain. You just talked about the radar all aglow and I'm afraid this is what we have to get used to. We have lingering tropical moisture here from Claremont all the way up Highway 27 going all the way up into the villages. So it depends on where you are is how much rain you're getting. But take a look. Okoe. It's about to pour on top of you again. It's raining at better than an inch and a half per hour there all the way through Oakland back out to the west into Sumter County. The areas that were really getting pummeled yesterday for mascot right back to Bushnell. You see the activity still heavy along 75. Not too much in the way of lightning strikes here, but you do see some in Sumter County working their way over here into Lake County just to the north of you there in mascot to the northern coast into Palm Coast, just below Palm Coast along 95, getting some big rain around the Palm Coast, Flagler Beach and Hammock Beach areas. I'm going to widen the view out and step here in the corner and take a look at what's going on. Remember, the big storm itself is way up in the Carolinas and the trailing banding of the tropical moisture is right there. I'm afraid it stays with us for tonight. I would say Friday night football is two thumbs up. It's a go, but I would take my rain gear if I was heading out just to make sure. You won't need the heavy rain gear, but the light rain gear will probably be necessary for some of you. Right now, the temperature is 82 in Orlando. I'll be back. We'll pinpoint overnight lows and talk about how much of this moisture is going to linger for your weekend. All right, Tom, thank you. Tonight, the wrath of Hermine is being blamed for the death of a Marion County man. The investigation unraveled this morning in the woods near Ocala. Matt Austin has the update now from deputies. Matt. Uh, Lisa, they say 56 year old John Mays was apparently sleeping in a tent at a campsite behind Diamond Oil near Ocala. He was with two others when the storms really started to pick up. One of those witnesses says around 4 a.m. she heard a loud bang. It was so loud it woke her up. She called for Mays, didn't get a reply, and it wouldn't be until a few hours later that it got lighter and she noticed what had happened. Then she rushed for help. I saw the tree and it fell right on his tent, right on his tent. Deputies spent much of the morning investigating this. Governor Rick Scott spoke about May's death during his storm briefing, saying for now, no other deaths or major injuries have been reported. Julie. Matt, thank you. While there are no other major injuries, as Matt just said, there is major damage across the panhandle. A seven-foot storm surge and several inches of rain flooded streets along the Gulf and knocked down trees and power to more than 100,000 people. We will spend the coming days assessing the damage and responding to the needs of our communities and Florida families. One of the local neighborhoods assessing damage is in Winter Garden. News 6 reporter Vanessa Ariza joins us there live. And Vanessa, families have been able, have families been able to make any progress on cleanup today? They are, and if you take a look at all of these downed trees, despite all of them, and trees like this one that are literally snapped in half, the people in this community tell me they are grateful that nobody was hurt and their homes, for the most part, fared out pretty well got sucked up and open during the storm. Brian Kinney and his daughters were one of a few families in Winter Garden who sought shelter in a pantry Thursday night. As I looked in the sky, of course, the street lights were on. Um, you could see the like a white cloud, but it was, you know, it was big at the top and then it was a bit of a funnel, a kind of a, you know, a funnel shape toward the ground. I couldn't see it on the ground or anything like that, but you could see a formation. Luckily, he and his family had a plan. I said, this is not a drill. This is serious. This is real. Take, you know, grab, you know, hide in the pantry. Kelly Cruz did the same with her 13 year old daughter. It was about 830 and my phone, the alert went off on my phone and I screamed upstairs with my daughter and I told her to get downstairs immediately and we went right for the pantry and that's when the, the train noise that you hear. Neighbors say as soon as the storm came, it left. You can see the damage it did to this pool screen and the roof of this home. But even with the scattered debris, people who live in this area say they fared pretty well given the circumstances. I think it could have been a lot worse. I think, you know, all things considered, we're all pretty lucky. 
Now, all of these down trees that you are looking at right now is along Porter Road. Throughout the day, people have been driving past here, some of them stopping to take videos and pictures to see all of this damage. Now, a lot of the questions that we heard throughout the community earlier this afternoon was, was it a tornado that created all of this damage here? Uh, Orange County's EMA assistant manager was out here earlier this afternoon surveying the damage, talking with residents in this area. Coming up tonight at 5, hear what he thinks and his preliminary thoughts on what may have caused all of this. But for now, we are live in Winter Garden tonight. Vanessa Ariza, News 6.